Hello everybody, Nick here at Scott and Dicky. We appreciate you stopping by for another one of our weekly tech videos. This time we're doing a little bit different. Usually we're teaching you how to, you know, measure something, teaching you how to build something, or telling you about a new product. But today I was able to get a chance to run back here in the race shop. And honestly, there's two reasons I like to come to the race shop. First, come on, if you're a gearhead, this is like going to church. The sights, the smells, the sounds. You really like coming back here, watching what these guys can do. Another reason, candy. Our boss back here likes to have a jar of candy. He always keeps my favorite stuff. Not really, but <clears throat> what we have today is actually one of the cylinder heads off of the 4.3 liter, like 2014 and up Gen 5 based V6s. This has been a really weird engine. We kind of made a DOD delete kit and then we actually made a couple upgraded camshafts for it. And the popularity is actually starting to take off on these things. People love it. It's aluminum, it's small, compact, lightweight, and Heck, they're already making pretty good power from the factory. On 85, it's really close to 300. We're seeing people that are just in stock form, taking them past that, and we're getting ready to see some numbers on some cam dynos soon from some of our great customers. We've already gotten some idle videos of cars that, and trucks that sound absolutely radical because they got six high compression cylinders loping at idle. It sounds really cool. Now, one of the things is I've measured both the intake and exhaust ports in terms of CCs and the combustion chamber and they match what GM advertises for the 5.3 liter, like an L83 in the same year model trucks. The valves, valve springs, stuff like that, they're the same part numbers at, at the catalog. But people keep asking, well, how much do these flow? I keep telling customers, you need to be looking at whatever a stock 5.3 head flows for the, you know, the L83 Gen 5 based engines. But I've yet to verify that. So these guys were able to show me how to run this thing without breaking it. And this is our super flow <laughs> cylinder uh, head bench flow tester. And uh, with a little bit of help, they're going to show me how to run it. We're going to get some numbers on this thing and maybe be able to help you guys pick some more performance parts in the future. So uh, it's about to get loud. Let's get to it. We just flowed the intake. We actually got some pretty surprising results. We'll go over the airflow number at the end of this. We'll actually put up the data, a chart, kind of help you guys learn more about this. I will say I'm kind of surprised. It actually starts nosing over only at about 500,000 lift. That's not as as much as I, I, th I thought it would go a little bit higher. Still some pretty good numbers, but now we're gonna move our rig over to the exhaust side of things and flow that side. We finally finished on the exhaust side after doing the intake side. To answer a couple questions we know people inevitably are gonna ask is, one, what is this over the intake port? Well, it's just clay. I actually molded it myself. A lot of people ask, why do you do that? Well, it's to help keep turbulent airflow from coming around the sharp edge here. You have an intake manifold, you have a port here, you have a throttle body, you know, intake and air filter. They don't have any sharp edges like this in the design. This kind of helps one, keep the airflow consistent when you're measuring it, but it also just helps give you a realistic view of what it is flowing. Some people say, well, this is cheating because it's helping. This doesn't help, it just keeps you from hurting your results. That is actually the key. Another question a lot of people say is, when you're flowing cylinder heads, I see, you know, something bolted on the exhaust port to simulate, I don't know, eight to 10 inches of like a header. Did y'all do that on this? No, we didn't. That is actually as controversial. Some people say that helps and you know, it's not realistic. It is realistic. Unfortunately, we did it just because we didn't have a, a setup to, for, to run a uh, exhaust little chopped up header right now. So we didn't do that. Another thing is these valves are actually on a tester spring. That's how we do this. And when we turn this dial, that's how we can do that. So you can't do that on the actual big valve springs. You just break this whole setup. So onto the results. Are the LV1 and LV3, because they do use the exact same cylinder head casting, cylinder heads on the 4.3 flow the same as the 5.3? They actually do. They actually get really, really close within a handful of CFM between each other all the way down the row here. And we seem to peak right at about 250-ish on the intake for the 
for the intake side here and the exhaust actually peaks right at 700 but there's a whole lot more to this story the actual flow numbers grow really well up until about the 400 lift range which sounds low then when you get into 500 it's a very small gain and after that on both intake and exhaust it's actually a creep a couple cfm at most and the actual exhaust was anywhere between 187 to 188 from 500 to 700 lift y'all are not going to be running that our cams are in the 500s kind of the low 500s to keep you guys using a nice cheap spring and this actually helps us in we're actually one of the reasons we're doing this is because we're thinking about making a third stage to our camshaft something really big for these guys we needed to know where this really matters and obviously low lift is where it's going to be at so a good low profile is going to help more than max lift in a big expensive valve spring kit uh, the other thing this is really going to help us with is how much duration do you need to put into these things? And can you port these things? Yeah, you can port them. More people are starting to ask places like Frankenstein or KTEC or whoever that does CNC porting, can I give you my stock castings to port them? Yes, you can. Do you need it though? These things actually seem to flow pretty well. You have to think this is only 4.3 liters. It's a little thing. How much power are you really needing? And it gets to the point where we've seen some guys make some really great results with boost. Why not save your money and put it to a turbo kit? Am I right? Uh-huh. I would. So, appreciate you guys stopping by for another one of our weekly tech videos. We, of course, are going to post this data so you guys can see it for yourself and share it with everybody. And, of course, share our videos. Like, share, subscribe, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, all that sort of stuff so we can help out fellow hot rodders like you and me. And I will see you guys next Friday for another one of our tech videos. Thanks for stopping by.